Right now we're standing at the Hall Rust Mine View and basically it's our brand new mine view that we just started constructing two years ago. Uh, we overlook an active mine pit. Not many have this opportunity to see an active mine. I was up here before the road was even put in and uh, yeah, we had to take some uh, serious 4x4 vehicles to, to get up here, but once I was up here, I could not believe the views. I, I figured there would be a good view of the mine. I did not think uh, what a great view the city of Hibbing would have and, and really the, in the entire Iron Range almost. My first impression of Castle Rock is a warm rural setting on the south side of town. Of course it has grown dramatically in recent years because so many people find it that same warm and comforting space, but it's a beautiful small town. And the first thing you see as you come over the bridge, you know, is this, this station that sits over here that's, you know, blend into the community but just has, you know, such great architectural features and colors. And I can't think of a better way to, you know, to come into a community and be welcomed truly by the fire department as one of the first things you see with a building that just looks awesome. the uh, river restoration, the bank, stream bank restoration. We have the park development, and then we had a critical part as far as burying a water feed pipe. That there were so many little things that came together to have such a great result. So it, it was hidden. People didn't know it was here, it wasn't used. And it's always neat to have a project that ends up adding so much to the community that we work for and enjoy being and, and, and working with and being part of that community. There's always this, this calculation that says there weren't a lot of bikes on Jackson before, so why would you put in a bike lane? And I think this is a perfect example is if you build it, they will come. The project came together and made this a more vibrant corridor from the bikeway to the sidewalk improvements and that, and also the changes to the uh, traffic patterns down here. I think this is just the start of many great things to come in downtown St. Paul and as improvements like this come along it's going to make it easier to get in and get around in St. Paul. We took 13th Street and we turned it from a two-way road into a one-way two-lane road. There used to be a pedestrian uh, bridge and walkway and we tore that totally down. You want a, an area where people feel comfortable walking through. Pedestrian safety was really the biggest driving point of this whole project. People were impressed. They did not understand the kind of change that was coming and once it got finished I got a lot of comments of, wow, that actually did come out. That's fantastic. The Meadows area is where a lot of our year-round residents live and the roads that were kind of here were not really built for safety. They didn't have any sidewalks or any bike paths or anything like that and so uh, about three or four years ago the uh, town council decided that they needed to make some improvements down here. It's made it a lot more pedestrian friendly down here already. There's places where there weren't sidewalks, there weren't ADA accessible sidewalks, and we've remedied a lot of that with the work. We 
really helpful being able to start first and foremost with a point cloud. We had a uh, point cloud drone, drone scan of the uh, amphitheater. So we used that as kind of our basis and starting point on a lot of our 3D modeling that took place throughout the feasibility study. Previously, we would have to come out, take our own hand photos, uh, hand dimensions, um, and try and do those kind of things, which out here in this kind of environment is nearly impossible. So it, it does cut our time down uh, dramatically. The biggest change in the past several years in Minnesota has been phosphorus limits and that's one of the reasons we're doing the design here in town. The facility was given a phosphorus limit in their NPDES discharge permit and the facility that they had here was unable to meet that permit without some improvements. They're doing a lot of tear down and rebuild of old components that were just outdated and then adding in oxidation and storage for uh, aerobic digestion, which will be part of the, the process now to reduce that phosphorus so that it isn't going into the Mississippi River. Project. It's um, a really unique project. It uh, has the purpose of protecting habitat for a rare species. Um, Interstate Island is one of two locations in uh, the Lake Superior watershed where common terns nest. The first phase of this uh, habitat restoration will involve raising the, the nesting colony so that it's at a safe elevation for them, as well as filling some of the flooded areas internal to the island. What you see before you isn't just something that we created. It's something that we created because we're listening to what people need. We, we couldn't have delivered such a fantastically tailored product to the market without the advice and assistance of SEH. Just in terms of how the infrastructure is set up, in terms of just every facet of the process is, is perfect. The way the buildings face, I mean, think about it, it matters. We knew that uh, we needed to upgrade the facility and so a study was undertaken as to whether you try to revamp the terminal that we had at that time or do you build a, a new terminal. We made a determination that a new terminal was the way to go. Where we're standing today is what typically people would see in an airport, but behind the scenes there's a lot more that goes into the airport. There's mechanical electrical systems, there's fire suppression systems, there's TSA screening. So this is the part that everybody sees, but there's a lot more to a terminal. 